Hey everybody, this is Lee Gerstman and welcome to the Lee Gerstman Show. With me is my friend Charles Trainer. How are you doing, Charles? I'm doing pretty good, Lee. Can you complain? Right on. Yeah. Um, I could complain, but it wouldn't be anything about you. So I guess I won't complain. I'll just, oh. I'll, I'll just, by I mean, just in general, um, well, I'm, I, I was about to complain about my phone, I'm uh, about to slip, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to complain about that. Um, anyway, we're going to be doing an album that was your pick. Mm -hmm. And, um, One minute. That album is Liam Gallagher and the album called Come On You Know. Yes, sir. Yeah, um Well, um, do you have anything you wanna say about why you picked this album or or Uh you know, it was we had just we had been talking between us and you know, you were saying well, I mean they're very much in the news and you know, I yeah. mean, we were talking. And you think you tend to think they're a little more interesting on their own. Well, and, um, yeah. And this is, from what he's saying, his last ever solo album. That mm. remains to be seen. But um, this was put out, I think, uh, two years ago now, mm. roughly. And uh, it would be the last one. Of course, he did one with John Squire. Um, this spring and we reviewed that but this was his last solo effort yet at this point so mm. i just thought it'd be an interesting one to do why not mm. well it ended up being in its own unique way interesting as far as mm. Like, I found it interesting how I kept listening to it. But um, we'll, 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 we'll find out more about that. Because, you know, we're talking about a group that every time I'm close to wanting to, or members of the group, close to maybe wanting to denigrate them you always give me a reason not to do that mm -hmm. and i um I, I i sometimes don't like that very much but 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 hey if i like some i have to admit it right. anyway okay do you want to start uh you can okay sure i'll start okay the first song is called more power okay this is an odd way to start the album. Aside from the children's chorus in the background sounding like the Rolling Stones, you can't always get what you want. It melodically sounds more like Leonard Cohen. And now you know why I don't listen to him very often. When it gets alternately heavy in places, it's better. And the last part of the song is what I like best. But it took too long to get there. And I'd say I appreciate is taking chances, but it's not going to make me want to go back to this song much. What do you think? Well, first off, you got a tip to the hat and the stones. Uh, you can't always get what you want. I think a little bit there with that children's choir. That's about where any comparison could begin and end, though. Uh, interestingly enough, the music seems slightly downtrodden, but lyrically, this is about a, as positive a message as you can get. Uh, chin up, it's a chin up little guy type of song. Uh, yeah. Which, as in uh, most of the works of either Gallagher brothers, it seems a bit of a dichotomy coming from either one of them due to their their eternal confidence or arrogance, depending on how you look at it. Uh, this song builds up, and the build up is pretty epic, and while somewhat of a head scratcher to open with a slightly slower song, somehow it still works. 
Okay. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that themes here are going to continue. Empowerment and uplifting. All right. And awesome ending of the track, I agree. Uh, solid, but not really an opener. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, um, all right. The next song is Diamond in the Dark. What do you think of that one? Uh, yet another interesting track here, due to having a similar flow and feel to some hip hop, at least in verbal delivery, especially in the latter parts of the chorus. The guitar work is very solid in the second verse. The best part of this song is the feel to it. And it's got like a certain degree of swagger to it. You can see someone go out and strut a bit to this. Again, more empowerment. Liam cares, ladies, if nobody else cares. I enjoy the song, but I'm already wondering where is rock and Liam at? Yeah. I put, oh boy, what's he trying to do? Sound like soul to soul? Musically, it's good enough to get a forgiving pass. But he's not the vocalist to put it off. Plus, I'm not 12 years old, so this song isn't for my crowd. Okay, now the next song is Don't Go Halfway. All right. Well, he went halfway in the song because half of it is excellent, and the other half are the other chord changes and melodic bits that overcrowd the good parts and make the song hit or miss. It's the best song on the album so far, but I'm hoping it's not the best song on the album, period. What do you think? Another interesting track here, lots of effects, both on the instruments and the vocals. It isn't the first time that it's happened so far on the album. Andrew Wyatt, he's the songwriter and producer, and I think he does usually do well crafting songs to Liam's strengths. And and this one's no different, albeit seems a slightly bit filler, as if all the technological things added to the song here is hiding something. But it is an interesting sound for sure to me. All right. Now, what do you think of Come On, You Know? One thing that stands out for me is the drumming and also the sound of the drums. It's a good stomping beat accented by some hand clapping. The chorus is so far the most rocking thing thus far on the album. Being his first few solo albums are rather straightforward albums for the most part. I guess it's kind of cool to experiment with sounds. Uh, great use of choiring in here. Uh, yeah, it's a good track. Still haven't been floored yet to this point, but pretty good. I can't help thinking, though, that Noel Gallagher's third album influenced this experimentation, though, because that's how his was. Okay. Now, I think, at this point, I wish we were reviewing a Sebastian Bach album. This Oof. song has a few good moments in it, but too few. And overall, it's an example of the things about Oasis I don't like when I encounter them. If Liam enjoyed making the album, that's fine. Let him enjoy it and listen to it instead of me. All right. Now... <clears throat> The next song is Too Good For Giving Up. It's a shame when the best production is on the worst song. This is something I could imagine hearing as the music for a MetLife commercial. If this is one of those <laughs> albums where the best songs are on the second half, I'll look forward to it. As it is, nothing on here is especially great but at least they weren't as bad as this song. What do you think? Oh, man. I don't know if I dislike it like that, but it, at this point, it is the obligatory ballad, but on that stay positive wavelength, so I don't know if it necessitates a ballad. Uh, Liam always did say music should be uplifting and inspiring, and this one could be. Uh, I think one of the more interesting things here is the use of the pedal steel guitar which I think is interesting to hear on the Liam Gallagher track and to be quite honest it could, this could be a country track easily uh, if a country singer sang it obviously so we get Liam Gallagher song with country music behind it which is interesting and while I like it he has better ballads in his catalog so about middle of the road in the grand scheme of things okay what do you think of it was not meant to be 
At this point, some of the attempt at limited auto-tune and experimentation is getting a tad bit grating. Uh, that doesn't need to be utilized on a Liam Gallagher track. And while it's okay in small doses, it's starting to get a bit tedious. This track is very boring, definite filler, and it could have been shaved off the record. Worst one I've heard to this point, and definitely the most boring, especially as hidden under a veneer of production tricks. Okay, I put... Now he's trying to outdo Tom Petty in making bad albums by using Wildflowers as his model. But there's a techno-sounding part in the middle which I liked, and would have wanted the whole song to be like that. But the remedy for following up the worst song on the album is to have an actual good song next, not the next worst song being next. Oh dear. All right. Now for Everything's Electric. With this song... Finally. Oh, I thought it was my turn. Go ahead. My um, bad. Um, no problem. Do you want to go, go first? No, go ahead, buddy. Okay. With this song, the album is becoming significantly better. It's a pretty great track. With the bridge, I would have rewritten... But I can't have everything. It's good enough to bypass some minor flawed 20 or so seconds. This is my jam, and I dig it. What do you think? Finally, a fucking rock song. Has been and is still my favorite track on the record. Co-written by Liam and Dave Grohl, who also plays drums on the track. Hmm. They do still play a bit with Gallagher's voice, but I can overlook it as this song is on this collection, the most straightforward rock track. And actually, one of his better tracks is a solo artist. It has swagger to it, best track in the record, in my opinion. Right on. What do you think of Worlds in Need? Two straightforward type tracks in a row, wow. It reminds me of tracks from his first album, As You Were. Also, it's just a simple little love song. No huge message, just universal type sound. Pretty cool harmonica thing going on, and. Is it phenomenal? No, but it's certainly better than it was not meant to be. Um, I'll give it one thumbs up, just if for the fact it isn't too overproduced. All right. I put first song on the album with no flaws. Excellent. The vibe and the instrumentation are first rate. And I would not have thought he could do this type of stuff, but he does it quite well. More of this stuff, please. All right, now the next one is Moscow Rules. Another great song, No Flaws. Very impressive. Perhaps the very best song so far. It has a Burt Bacharach, Hal David vibe to it. I really like that. This gets a few thumbs up. What do you think? Uh, it's Moscow Rules, correct? Yes. I think this qualifies more as a ballad, and wow do I love this track. It's about as melancholic as you get, and uh, tons of orchestration here. About as sad of a ballad as Liam has ever committed to tape. Gallagher absolutely sings the shit out of this song, but again, his songwriting team knows how to craft the track around his voice really well, and this one's certainly no different. Haunting and memorable for sure. Probably my second favorite on the album. I usually gravitate to this and everything is electric when I dust it off. Right on. What do you think of <laughs> I'm Free? Well, we finally get a song that I believe shows off Liam's confrontational side. He's pretty pissed off on the track. Probably the second most rocking song on the album. Well, it points. It is. But then it has to go off at overproduced tip at times. The chorus rocks at least, great guitar work on it. Still slightly mediocre overall, but as far as this album lacking some rock at times, this isn't the worst. Just mediocre overproduced rock music trying to fit in with contemporary sounds. Okay. I put, it's quite unusual, but it works. I like the quirky sort of messy different stuff going on in it. It's not as immediate as the few songs before it, but it ranks up there in originality. Very cool. All right, now for Better Days. 
The production is fantastic on this. But the song itself resembles more of the stuff on side one I didn't care for as much. It's not a truly bad song, but it doesn't compare with the songs which I've said are the best on here. What do you think? Listening to that the other day, it reminded me why I don't listen to this record as a whole too often. It isn't because of Gallagher, and it's not necessarily the songs themselves, but see, you like the production on this. I thought it was overdone a lot. And this track is annoying because of those choices. Scale it back and we might be able, be able to enjoy it more. It's really just style choices. And this is a, an example of sound I don't usually go for. I think it's probably a good song, but it's way overproduced, which is a shame. All right. I guess I would agree and strip away the production, strip away the instruments, have a blank track, and I would like that better. So there. Anyway, um, what do you think of, though, the last song, Oh Sweet Children? We open with a slower song, and, I, and we have to close with one as well for some reason. Well, kind of. It's kind of slower, but I don't know. Until it kicks into that chorus. And this one has a feel to it similar to John Lennon's solo material, material to my ears, of course, which is odd dude they're not really you know i'm not getting too many other feelings of like beetle tracks or something on this album but i get a little lennon feel here and uh it is cooler than a couple of the weak tracks but actually me and gallagher made a cover of a lennon's bless you and it was a b-side to diamond in the dark and i think it was way better they should have put that on here and ended with that okay i haven't i don't know if i heard it but whether I heard or not, I, I automatically agree with you. Anyway, <laughs> now I think more like, oh, for Pete's sake, it's one of the side one type of songs, perhaps competing with Too Good For Giving Up as worst song. I picked this overall as the very worst. Okay, there you go. Well, you know, yeah, I would. I don't know. Yeah, I, I can't really argue that. I don't really like that song either. Yeah. There are two bonus tracks that I think are really abysmal. So oh, I'm glad we did um, those. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe, maybe if I purposefully listen to Air Supply and then listen to those two, I might like them better. But then Air Supply. But I'm not yet totally drunk enough to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hear anyway, you. um, but so I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, you say their stuff is interesting on their own. Um, I like. I think he's better with just straightforward, not overproduced yeah. music. I My think. Opinion, yeah, but. I. I think that what I mean by interesting is with Oasis even though they do experiment and do stuff that's surprising, I would say there's, to me, at least more of a sense of this is an Oasis song, and I can kind of make a guess as to what it might be, whereas with the Gallaghers, they sometimes throw me for a loop. Not always in a good way, not always in a bad way. Sometimes in a great way, sometimes in a, oh, why do we have to go here way? But that's, I guess, what I mean by interesting is I think that they maybe branch out a little more on their own. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, this was an attempt, and I don't know that it was a great one. Yeah, but... Yeah. I do, though, think that, I mean, I thank you for letting me hear it because, you know, there were enough good songs on it to make it worth my time. And if you say that one of the songs that I liked reminded you of his first solo album, I guess I should mm -hmm. listen to that because I might love it. 
you never know. You might. It's not. It isn't as bells and whistleish as this was. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Charles, for being on the show. And Thanks for having me again, Lee. Right on. Okay. This is Lee Gerstman, and this has been my show. And take care, everybody. Bye-bye.